Hello there. How are you? Welcome to the lesson on progress. So if you want to see what your students are doing for progress in your courses or progress as a group, you can come here to your support students tab and you scroll down to progress. And when it opens, when this when the student progress screen opens, you're going to have a choice between viewing progress by course or viewing progress by group. And we're going to go over the course functions first. So let's say I open up my progress and I come here to courses and I want to know how everybody in the maintenance task analysis course here is doing. I have a few options. I can come straight to that course and go down to the progress reports tab here and press this button, or I can click on these ellipses. Now I'm going to show you the ellipses first. If I click on the ellipses, it gives me the opportunity to run one of two types of reports. And that's a cohort report in HTML or a cohort report in CSV. Now don't get confused with the whole cohort part of this. It's everyone that's enrolled in this class is gonna be on these reports. So if you have 30 people enrolled in this course, when you click uh, cohort report HTML or cohort report CSV, all of those students uh, and their progress will be listed on those files. Now, what if I don't want to necessarily run a report and have a file link emailed to me and have a, you know, a file external to Thinkific? What if I just want to view them quickly on screen? Well, <clears throat> there's no reason to run the reports in the ellipses. Just come here to progress reports button and click it. And it'll open up and show you all of the information that'll end up on the CSV or HTML report. It shows what the viewing percentage for each student is, how much of the course have they viewed, how much of the course have they completed, their name, their email, whether they've completed the course or not. If they have, there'll be a date here. If they have not, it'll be blank like you see here. Uh, when they started the course, when they were activated in um, the system and the last time they signed in. Now, this is really important if you're looking at like student engagement, student accountability, those types of things. You may say, well, I want to make sure that my students are logging in regularly. This dude hasn't logged in till, uh, since October 14th. And here we are in the middle of December. I've got to reach out to this guy and find out why he's not necessarily where I expect him to be at this point in the course. Now, depending on how you've designed your course, um, depends on whether this is really an issue. We'll talk about that toward the end of this lesson. I just wanted to show you it's capable here of seeing that. And then of course, if I have a company name loaded for them in the system, I'll be able to see that as well. Now, uh, just like in the ellipses on the previous page, you can run a file here external to Thinkific. You can run an export CSV file. Just click that button and you'll get your little friendly Thinkific notification that they've queued your report and you'll get a email when it's ready for you. Okay. Now <clears throat> that's how basic course, student progress by course is viewed. And you can see all the courses that are published in the system here. Now, what if I want to see the progress for a group of students? If I click on groups, it's going to take me to all of the designated groups that I've created in Thinkific under the groups tab here under support your students. And this is why I mentioned in the groups lesson that it's it's nice to have students organized in groups sometimes because I might just want to zero in on a certain class of students, um, you know, certain category of students, uh, people enrolled from a specific company, whatever the case may be. This is really big with like my B2B clients. I'll enroll their students in a course with tons of other people, but I want to pull a report specific to those students. I can just create a group for them and pull their progress report individually. Now, if I don't have any progress to report, like if students are enrolled, but they haven't done anything, no one's done anything to report, you're going to get this notification here. There's nothing to report. But if I go to my groups and I click on one that actually has students and they're doing things and I click on the button there, I'm going to get a, um, you know, this is the Lucas Marino fan club. <laughs> I'm going to get a progress report for every course that person is enrolled in. So you can see here that this version of Lucas Marino 
is enrolled in the course tutorial and then there's nothing else for for them listed right here but as we get down to the maintenance task analysis course they're also enlisted there i can see their progress for both of those courses because i've got them in a group that person is in a group so this is the difference or one of the benefits of viewing people in groups rather than in courses in courses i only see their progress in that one course but if i have a student enrolled in multiple courses and I click on a group that they're in, I'll see all of their course progress, not just their one course progress. So this is pretty cool. It's a, it's a way for you to see um, things by group. And again, I'm, I'm a big fan of doing this for like my business to business clients. If I have a company call me and want to enroll their people like Merino Consulting Services here, put this dude in this class, um, I can say to their manager, hey, uh, this week's uh, progress report looks pretty good. You might want to give this guy a nudge. He hasn't logged in and done much. <laughs> His last sign-in was, oh, I don't know, never. Um, meaning he hasn't really logged into the course to do anything. His account was activated on December 16th, but he hasn't logged into any of his courses and done any of his work, okay? And maybe he logged in in October, right? Let's say the same person here was working for Merino Consulting Services. I could say, dude, your guy hasn't logged in since October 14th, and here we are in mid-December. So it's really cool for you to be able to run these reports. If I'm going to send a report to a manager at a company or whatever, I'm going to pull the, X, the CSV file, clean up the CSV file, and then forward that to them. Um, that's kind of how I share that with managers, uh, training managers, training directors and companies that fund training through my company. Okay, so those are the basics of student progress by course type or by group. And if you have any more questions, you can always drop a comment in the discussion at the bottom of your, or at uh, in your course player there. If you don't want to put it in the discussion, you want to just read about it, you can click on the ellipses in your student progress uh, window and you can click on about this feature and it'll take you to a help article. You can also come down here as always to the help center and search uh, progress reports in the help center. Okay guys, uh, last thing I'm gonna share with you before we leave is um, some advice about these reports. You want to be very careful about who you share them with because these reports might have multiple people on them and their progress, and some people are going to be sensitive to that. So if you do forward a CSV file to someone with the progress report, make sure you tell them uh, in the file that it might be business sensitive or it might be um, it might it might be sensitive. It also has people's email addresses on it, and in some instances, some countries, some businesses, some industries, uh, that could be sensitive information. So you also want to be careful with that. So I gave you a recommendation earlier to share the CSV file with the manager. Um, just know that when you're sharing this data with them, um, that you're sharing all of that information with them. And it's usually not a big problem for business to business work. Uh, it might be a problem if you're sending it to a to a contractor or a consultant that you've hired to help you with your business, not necessarily related to the company who hired you to train their clients, right? So you just got to be careful that you're not sharing information that they've contractually asked you not to share. So if you're like, if I was going to send this to a, uh, a virtual assistant or to a partner of mine, I might pull the CSV file and I might leave the first and last name, but scrub the email addresses for those students. Right, just because they don't need it, it's floating these people's PII out there, um, and maybe their company isn't cool with that. So, just uh, just a little note there: if you do B two B work, um, something to be aware of when you share progress reports. Okay, guys, that is it for this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next.